All right, so we just got done talking about character strings and some uh, additional functionality in the string R package we can use to analyze those. Another data type that we haven't talked much about um, that but does exist and it is actually extremely useful to know how to operate or work with them are date and timestamps. So dates, unfortunately, can come in many different forms. Um, they can be written in different formats. A lot of this is just dependent on uh, maybe uh, where you live um, or also just uh, the common conventions within an organization for writing out dates. And that can make things a little bit difficult. Um, there are functionalities built into Base R where you can work with dates, um, but they, similar to kind of like the whole working with strings, it's kind of convoluted and uh, there's inconsistencies in how we actually apply the syntax to work with them. So Luberdata is another package that comes when you install Tidyverse um, that allows and makes it just that much easier to kind of handle and manipulate date time variables. All right, so to illustrate, we're gonna go ahead and first of all, we load the Tidyverse package. And now when we do library Tidyverse, if you recall um, from one of the very first lessons, Luberdata is one of those packages that does not automatically get loaded when you load Tidyverse. So we actually have to load Luberdata separately if we want to use it. So we're going to look at two different data sets. We're going to look at um, the transactions data within the complete journey. That's primarily for a lot of the exercises we'll do. And then we're going to use this NYC flights um, package and the flights data from that. Um, and that'll be most of the slide examples that we do. Okay, so there are many useful skills to have when working with dates. Uh, creating date and timestamps is really important. Um, and then accessing, extracting, and changing parts of dates is also extremely important and common. Now there's other things that we can do, such as work with time zones and then do um, to do some math with the differences between certain dates. So it's kind of working with what we call durations. Now the reading lesson will go into detail on those last two items. Um, but for these slides, we're just gonna focus on how do we create dates and then how do we access and extract parts of dates? Cause that honestly is probably far more common um, in typical analyses than working with time zones or computing durations. All right, so within Luberdate, there is a, a handful, actually probably a couple handful of um, functions that we can use to convert a, um, a string, a character string of a, like a date representation into a date and or date timestamp, okay? Now all these functions do the exact same thing. They're gonna convert a string into a date or date time. It just depends on what is the format, right? If the format has the year first followed by the month followed by the day, we would use the YMD. So this is year, month, then day function. Um, if, if it was uh, maybe let's say the year, the day, and then the month, right? So there is somewhere on here, there, well here you got year, day, month, but then you have underscore HM for hours and minutes. So we can go ahead, we can look at this year, what did I say, year, day, month, right? So there is a function where if we had 2022, uh, the day 12 and the month, eight. so this is August 12th of 2022, right? That would convert it into an actual date object, right? And we can validate that what we are doing here is converting this to a date. When we enclose the output with class, we see that it is a date. Okay, so now if you have a time component, let's say you have an hour, um, a minute, and, a, and or a second value, so an actual time stamp with your um, date stamp, then there are additional functions here that extend and include hours and minutes, right? Or here is where we have a date time stamp that is day, month, year, followed by hours, minutes, and seconds. So. This, the only thing that differs here is what is the format of that string that you're passing into these functions? 
And what is the ordering of the year, month, day, hour, minute, and second variables? Okay. Now, sometimes we have um, parts of our uh, date and or date timestamp time in separate variables, right? So there is convenient make date and then make date time functions that allow us to supply different components of our date and or timestamp um, and produce a date time, right? So here's an example where make date. So here I supply year equals 22, month equals eight, and day equals 24. And that will supply a full on date, um, date stamp. So if I were to copy this code and apply this and, and close this with class, we see it's producing a date. Now what's handy about this is if our information that I supplied here was actually saved in variables, right? Or maybe in separate columns within a data frame, right? We can now just pass the make date or make date time, those variables of interest to produce that date timestamp. All right. So you're going to test this out within the flights data. We have a separate variable for the year, the month and the day. So what I want you to do is I want you to use uh, mutate from dplyr See if you can create a new column and we're going to name it date and convert these values, the year, month and day into a date stamp. Okay. So hopefully you figured it out. Um, and here what we needed to do was we're going to mutate and create a new date variable. And that date variable is going to be make date and it's going to be year, month, and day. So we're passing the year, month, and day variables from our flights data into make date. And it's going to iterate over each observation and it's going to produce the date based off of the year, the month, and the day in uh, values in those columns. Okay, another very useful capability of Luberdate is the ability to extract different components of dates. So lots of times we'll have a date or date timestamp and what we want to get out of it is a year or a quarter or a month, right? So say you have transactions by um, a date, you know, date timestamp for each transaction. But what you want to do is actually find all those transactions related to the month of December right? Or maybe you want to find all transactions for the weekend, right? So for Saturday and Sunday, we need to extract those kind of bits of information. And we can do that with these year, quarter, month, and so on functions. For example, if I pass this year function, a year and timestamp, we get the year component out of it. I can also get the quarter of that what quarter is it? What calendar quarter is that uh, date timestamp in? I could get the month out. So here I pull it the month and you can see I use this label equals true. And what that does, right? So we can take a look. If I don't include this label equals true, what I get in return is the numeric number for that month, right? So the month here is 12 December. Uh, so what I could do is I want to add a label and that's going to add the actual named label of that month and it comes in abbreviated form i could actually say i don't want it to be abbreviated and now i get the full month of december out we can also use this w day so this is the weekday get the weekday from this date so here this uh, looks like it was december 2nd of 2018 that fell on a sunday Okay, just like string R, it is very common to use Luberdate functions inside of filter and mutate. So for example, say we wanted to find all of the um, flights that occurred on the weekday six and seven. Okay, so what I could do is I could filter where, so here time hour is the full date timestamp. And I could filter for those elements where the actual day that this date stamp fell on was six or seven. 
And so that would identify, I believe, the way WD, W day works is six and seven would be the weekend. Let's see, can we can we verify? Okay, yep, so one means Monday. So for weekdays, uh, Monday is always the first day, so that's equal to number one. And so that would mean Sunday would be equal to seven. So here we're looking for all those flights that fall on the weekend. Now, we can also use this within mutate, right? So say I wanna create a new variable that's called weekday, and that's gonna be equal to the W day of time hour, right? So now what we see here, when we go through here, we see that all these dates are related to this weekday, Tuesday. So it looks like January 1st of 2013 fell on a Tuesday. All right, so what I want you to do is pause the video and using the transactions data, compute the average sales by weekday. On average, which weekday experiences the greatest average sales? Number two is compute the total daily sales for each day of the year, what was the date that experienced the largest total sales? Is this surprising? All right, so to answer number one, what we do is we take transactions. We're gonna create a new variable called um, day, and that's gonna end up being the weekday. Then what we do is we actually group by that new variable that we created, and we, can, we summarize to get the total sales, right? So now we can see for each day of the week, we get the total sales associated. So I don't arrange in this case, but it looks like Sunday has the total, the largest amount of um, sales uh, versus other days, which is not surprising. A lot of people do their uh, grocery shopping on a Sunday to prepare for the week. Now, one thing to note is the way that we approach number two is gonna be slightly different. So here we created a new variable, and then we, we did group by of that variable. When we answer number two, what we do is kind of a, a pretty cool um, shortcut. What we can do is we can say, take transaction, transactions, and we're gonna group by, and we can create that variable on the fly in group by. So rather than do a mutate and then group by, we could actually do that directly in group by, which is pretty cool. So here, to compute the total daily sales value for each day of the year, what we do is we, first of all, take the date from our transaction timestamp, and then, so that's gonna get the um, each day um, for that year, and then we're gonna summarize and get the total sales for each of those dates. And now when we get the, we use slice max to find uh, which, date had the largest amount of sales, we see that it actually falls on Christmas Eve, right? Which is not surprising because a lot of people doing last last second grocery shopping to prepare for the, um, the Christmas or winter break uh, festivities. All right, things to remember. Lubridate, whenever you're gonna work with date or timestamps, Lubridate is the package you wanna use to uh, analyze date times. Many of the functions, um, th there's a ton of functionality within Lubridate, but the main ones that you're gonna find useful are ones where we're gonna create or convert a string to a date time, such as uh, this YMD underscore HMS, right? And there's many different variants of this, all depending on the ordering of the com date time components within that string. We can also use make date and make date time to convert separate date time component variables into a date time object. And then last, we can extract individual components such as the year, the month, the hour, and so on of a, a date object by using the year, month, hour, and the other functions such as seconds and so on. All right, so check out the, um, the lesson for, or the reading for this lesson, it goes into more detail. Also starts talking about time zones and working with durations, which can be handy. Uh, and hopefully that'll answer a lot of your questions. If you have any additional ones, um, hit up the discussion board on Canvas.